Hello everybody and welcome, it's EDS here bringing you guys kind of an interesting little video. Um, this is the first, uh, I guess, live recording, quote unquote, I've done in quite a while. And if you can't talk about the title, uh, it is going to be me telling you guys how to use uh, any controller, pretty much, that you want on an emulator on your phone. Now, before I get started, I cannot test this with Dolphin because my phone, even though it's much better than my old phone, it does not support uh, Dolphin Mobile or Dolphin Android. So when I get another phone at some point in the future that does support all, uh, Dolphin Android, I will redo this video for that. But um, the main thing I wanted to bring across here is uh, well, also, by the way, that's just kind of like a gaming draw uh, backdrop. So also look at this awesome. Super pretty. Um, anyway, this is actually going to be important to the video, so don't worry about it. It's not just here for show. Um, so first thing, there's two different ways that you can connect your controller to your phone. The first and most obvious is Bluetooth, but not everybody has a Bluetooth controller. Most people like that are not serious hardcore gamers don't really have Bluetooth anything. Uh, and the ones that do, you know, Bluetooth, sometimes they don't need it that much. I don't know. Uh, but I'm not going to be doing any like any like uh, app games or anything like that. I'm prim primarily going to be using emulators. So on my phone right now, I have a, I'll just show you real quick. Let's bring it down to the center of the screen. So as you can see at the top row, I have a Game Boy emulator, Game Boy Advanced, Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, and Nintendo DS. Now, I will be using all of these emulators in this video, or maybe I'll do separate videos. I'm not exactly sure yet. Um, it'll work exactly the same, so I'll probably just do it all in one take. So, first thing you're gonna need to do, if you have Bluetooth, okay? Now, I did a previous video where I connected uh, these little bad boys to my old phone via Bluetooth. Now, the thing with that was, is that these Joy-Cons tend to have quite a bit of lag, and the lag is kind of annoying, especially when you're trying to play emulators. And also, without a little USB dongle, it would only pick up one Joy-Con at a time. So I couldn't just sit on my phone with both Joy-Cons like this and play my favorite Nintendo games on my phone. So, because of that, I decided to look into an actual Android controller. And I found this one. Um, I don't remember what the name is. I'll probably put it in the description, but this Android controller I got off of Amazon for about $17. I got it for $17 because I paid extra for the clip to be attached. Now, the way you set this up is pretty simple. All you do is hold the home button and the X button simultaneously while your Bluetooth on your phone is on to allow the phone to search this controller and it'll come up as gamepad. Now, I've already done this. So I'm just gonna go ahead to Bluetooth right now. And to reconnect it, you can see it already says gamepad right there. To just reconnect it, all you have to do is hold the, the home button for a few seconds and it'll connect. Instantaneous, just like that. Now, this phone is now connected by this controller. So as you can see, I can just kinda use the analog stick. I'm gonna go ahead and put it a little more off to the side so you can kinda see my hand movements a little bit more. Now, I'm also gonna show you guys a little bit of gameplay with this. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead to, uh, uh, we'll just say my boy for now. Also, I, uh, I kind of made this little cardboard stand. Um, if you guys haven't seen my video on uh, how I used to record 3DS footage, you'll recognize this. Um, or you guys, if you guys have, you'll recognize it. But the phone kept like sitting really low, so I just kind of poked a hole in the cardboard and stuck another piece of cardboard in it, just to kind of give it an extra little, little hitch there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and open up uh, my My Boy. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys can see it too well, but right over here we have Metroid Fusion, which I'll go ahead and click. And right now, as you can see, none of my controls are configured. So we'll just go ahead here, go to settings, go to input, key mappings, select the key you wanna map, and then just map it to the appropriate key. So up for there down there. I always make, um, because I played on the GameCube, I always make this button here the select button. So actually, hold on, let me increase the brightness a bit because it is a little low. There we go. There, that way you can see, you guys can hopefully see a little bit better. Uh, so we'll go ahead and hit select there, start there, A there, and then B there. And then of course L trigger like that, R trigger like that. And I also like to go down here 
to the fast forward function and I set L2 to that. But that's just a personal preference. You can set these keys to whatever you want. So we're gonna go ahead back over here to Metroid Fusion and it boots up just fine. And as you can see, unlike with my, um, so let's just go ahead and pop up some gameplay here. You can actually see, let me just go ahead and zoom in on that just a little bit. There we go. Kind of move that up a little bit. You can see that there is next to no latency. And I can do the speed up function as well without any issues. So that's neat. So yeah, that's how you connect a Bluetooth one and it will work the same for regardless of what emulator you are using, okay? Um, I'll go ahead and maybe if you guys request it, I will show videos of that later on, but that's just kind of get you the feel about how the Bluetooth one operates with this. Now, it'll work differently for different Bluetooth controllers, but that's just how this one works. Again, I don't remember the name of it offhand, but I will leave a link to either the Amazon page or the name of the controller itself uh, down in the description. So go ahead and check that out. Again, it was 17 US dollars, give or take, not including tax. Uh, so definitely pretty cheap. It is very light. I must tell you that now. It barely weighs like a quarter of an ounce, like maybe a couple ounces maybe. Um, but it is pretty durable. And the best part about it was the clip. So we'll just go ahead and real quick, I'm going to go ahead and put it in the clip. And there you go. The clip is a little wobbly, yes. Um, but as long as you're not doing anything crazy, uh, you shouldn't see any issues. So we'll go ahead now and we'll disconnect Bluetooth real fast. So I'll just go down here, I'll disconnect Bluetooth. And then I'll just hold the uh, center power button to, or center home button to turn it off. Hold it for a few seconds and it'll turn off. All right. Now to get to the real meat of the video, what I wanted to really show was something else I got on Amazon uh, that I actually just got the day of recording this. I ordered it on Amazon with um, just a few weeks after I ordered uh, this controller here, uh, my copy of Breath of the Wild for the Switch, and also my um, the little Android controller I showed you. I ordered all that at once. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to use this on your phone. And it's really simple. This is all you need, right here. It is a male to female USB with a female mini out and a male mini out, okay? The female mini out is not as important, um, at least not for this video in particular, but the male mini out is what we will be using. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch between a couple of controllers. Uh, first one I'm actually gonna show you is not gonna be the, uh, the Switch one that I have on screen right now. I'm actually over here, kind of in the corner here. Uh, I'm grabbing my previous uh, gamepad controller, okay? That is my Xbox 360 controller I got from GameStop. It's not an official Xbox controller, obviously. It's one of those, you know, crappy knockoff ones, but it does have, obviously, USB mail to mini USB mail. So I'll just go ahead and plug that in off screen, kind of loop it around. And it's really simple, guys. All you gotta do is plug in to the USB female, and then plug in the USB male into the into the female or the USB mini male into the female port of the controller or of the phone. And as you can see, we are connected. We're connected as fourth player for some strange reason, but as you can see as well, it's working. See? So I'm gonna go back into Fusion real fast because it's the easiest to set up. And there we are. We are set up. See? Same as before. This time I have the speed up function on this one set to a different button. Yep, and there's a start button, jump button, shoot button. And again, absolutely no latency. So we'll go ahead and scroll down out of here. And I'm just gonna unplug the controller here. I'm gonna plug in my next one which is a genuine Switch controller, but it is not the Metroid-themed one that's on screen. It's actually the one that I bought prior to that. Uh, this one I got at Target for about, uh, I wanna say 30, 40 bucks, uh, maybe a little bit less, maybe it was like 20 something, I don't remember. Uh, for some reason it comes with a detachable D-pad. I, I don't know why you would want that, but I mean, if you do, it's there, so I guess that's cool. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this cord again. If I can reach for it, geez. It's all looped in on itself. All right. <clears throat> so 
So we already have the dongle inside of the of the phone. So I'm just gonna plug this in. I'm just gonna plug it in right there. And we'll just go ahead and hit back real quick on the home page. And there you go. Also immediately operational. So we'll go back to the Game Boy emulator. And there you go. Uh, actually, the buttons are configured a little weird on this one. Uh, so, but yeah, um, that's because of the custom mapping. Um, but you can, again, map the controllers to whatever you want. Uh, it seems that this right here is the A button. Um, doesn't seem to have a speed up function. Uh, that's A. Okay, so Y is set to fire. So apparently this uh, got auto mapped um, because I have not actually connected this controller yet. And nothing is set. Okay, so that's set to R. ZR is set to R here. Nothing is set to um, to speed up. But again, it's completely just one to one ratio. Just nothing wrong with it at all. All right, one more. And again, guys, if you would like me to test out other controllers um, or other game emulators, I have no issue with that. Whoa, whoopsie. <laughs> I do that all the time, actually, guys. But it's stable. It's fine. Yeah, so if you guys want me to do other emulators, um, go ahead, leave suggestions in the comments. I get, to, I read every comment you guys post, so I have no issue with uh, following any of your guys' requests. But now I'm gonna test it with my Metroid Samus controller for the Switch. Still beautiful, gold and red, two of my favorite colors. Uh, and again, same thing. I'm actually gonna go ahead and plug it right into the micro USB. It's gonna go, or the uh, female USB. And again, we'll go back to the homepage. And again, you can see it works just fine. You see the little uh, little box up here kind of moving around. You know, for this one, actually, I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to show you guys uh, yeah, uh, the ES emulator to let you know that it does work just fine here, too. So we're going to go ahead and load a new game, hit Pokemon White, and hit Start. Now, this controller appears to be mapped, so we're just going to go ahead and hit Fast Forward because I always like having Fast Forward on this game. All right, so apparently, just like with the other game, uh, the B button here is mapped as the, uh, the A button. We'll just go ahead and turn that on. As you can see, I was playing a bit of Pokemon White 2 recently. Um, but yeah, same deal, one-to-one uh, -one precision. And that's the B button here. So yeah, no lag, no lag at all. This is also thanks to the fact that my, um, my phone is pretty powerful. Uh, it's not very strong, and it's not strong enough to do a Dolphin, obviously, or Citra. Uh, the unofficial Citra Android emulator, but it is fast enough to do everything else. And you know, Pokemon doesn't isn't really taxing on a system. But uh, for the sake of example, you know what? Yeah, why not? This video is already long enough as it is, so hell, why not? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and test this. So here we have my N64 emulator Moopin. Okay. Now for this, I already mapped most of the keys prior to this video. I mapped up, left, right, down. D-pad's all mapped, L's mapped, Z's mapped, R's mapped. Uh, B is not mapped, so we're gonna go ahead and select B. That's gonna be B, and then that's gonna be A. So we got A, we got B, up and down. And then, weird thing I do for this is that I actually use, um, for this, I use the Y button for the left C button and the X button for the right C button. Uh, the reason for that is pretty simple, it's just because of how, um, my previous computer handled the instance formulator. I actually had to do that because the left and right on the second analog stick would not register. We'll go ahead and back up out of here. Now, um, for the sake of argument here, we're gonna go ahead and select a different game. Um, I was gonna do Banjo-Tooie, but uh, Banjo-Tooie on my phone has major graphical issues. Um, so also pardon the frickin' airplanes if you can hear that, guys. It's annoying to me too, trust me. So let's go ahead and select Banjo-Kazooie here. Uh, I'm gonna... I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, hold on. Eh, let me get this out the way. There we go. Okay. Now, theoretically, this could possibly be used for a second controller, but I have no idea how. Um, if you guys know in the comments, please let me know. I'd love to hear it. Anyway, so I'm gonna disable cheats for this and hit resume. It'll load it up. Yep, there you go. Banjo Kazooie still has graphical issues, as you can see from the. Uh, sorry about that. As you can see from the stuttering background. But all in all, it works just fine. I mean, I hope you guys don't have seizure issues, because I sure don't. 
Yeah, I don't have the ground pound yet. I only just started this file, so, but yeah. So that, my friends and family, is all different types of controllers. We have, once again, so let me zoom out if I can a bit. There we go. We have an antenna switch controller here, which is not a pro controller. It's, well, actually it is a pro controller, I think. Uh, either way, we have that. We have my Xbox controller. We have an Android exclusive controller and a second switch controller, all working with no issues on my phone. So yeah, guys, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, please make sure to leave them in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Uh, this has been ZDS, making YouTube fun one video at a time, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good night, everybody.